Okay, now I'm back. Now well, I got a little close up on where I'm on my last plug there. Uh, I don't remember what I've done. Really, I had lunch and stuff. The other camera up high, it went out when I didn't know it. I think I made one little video mentioning that. But anyway, so I'm back from lunch. I'm going to put that last plug in. The lawnmower guy's gone. So gave the cameras all a chance to charge up, so I can use whatever ones I want. But I always plug in the one I'm going to leave on for a long time. I didn't want to drag two cords out here, so the other one is just on the on the uh, <coughs> battery. No, it's not, it's just running, but it's not recording. Okay, so. Uh, I cleaned the plugs up in the uh, video just before this one. Uh, cleaned them up real good. Uh, the a XL ones about my backup plugs, <laughs> used ones. And I want to see if it will run okay. I brought my multimeter out in case I d decide to test the plug wires and stuff. Kind of. Well, I remember you can test them easy with an ohm meter. I don't remember what what they're supposed to read though. Actually, it seemed like I remember. Well, back years ago, I didn't really, didn't really understand using old meters, and I didn't. I don't know if I even have one on my old realistic uh, analog meter. I can't remember. But I used to actually get better results using them, just running, seeing if it run, if it would run 12 volts through it. I remember that now. If you run 12 volts through it, you're good. If it won't, if it goes down, especially like the six or something, then you're bad. Remember that. So that could be what I could do too. I can. You have to take it all the way off to do that, though. So, you know, put it, take it off the both ends, and then put some kind of jumper wire in it so that you can hook it up to the battery. And then you can use your voltmeter to jump from one end to the you know, other end of the battery. That one's tight all the way. I guess I'm, well, I'm not in front of the camera, but I'm definitely, I can see a little better down in here now. I guess the light's moved around the sunlight. I don't know if you can see down there or not. Probably not too well. I'll put the light in there. Just hopefully, unless it makes it worse. I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell sometimes. With these camera uh, screens. That's probably blocking where I'm working. Actually, you can't see where I'm working very good no matter what, can you? That does block where I'm working, though. I wonder if that'll help without being in the way. I don't know if that helps. Down here... Oh, it just don't show too good at all. At least there's more light down. Too much stuff in the way, heater hoses and everything else on the other side. If I'd have had it over there when I was doing this one, it would have showed. Maybe I did do that. I remember to put that ground strap back on there. I had, didn't have one for a long time. And usually, your transmission will ground you just fine. But mine had good rubber mounts and <laughs> it didn't ground. And I had some kind of trouble with the electrical system. I can't remember what it was now. I think maybe it wouldn't start or something. Let me look at this. Where is it? Now that one looks... It's more normal on the uh, odd new kind of electro that I remember I'd ever seen before. And a little... Looks like... Maybe a combination of... I'm getting reflections combination of on the very end which that's not where the contacts are but I see maybe a combination of uh, can't get rid of the reflections combination of uh, a, few, a little oil and a little little fuel could be a very rich this thing is 
always had to kind of watch it about being rich anyway, the carburetor. But, so, and when you flood it, you know, when you're trying to start it, old gas, all that, it's not going to look real wonderful like it should. And then, of course, there's always the possibility. I think if it'd be anything, it'd be the valve guide seals that were leaking a little oil in there. This is the side I saw a little smoke on the other day when it was running. The other side had no smoke. So, well, I can kind of see why now. Of course, it could have been because that front plug was broken, wasn't firing, too. Could have been burning in the headers uh, by the heat, you know, from the other cylinders. And making smoke. <clears throat> but, uh... Go ahead and put this plug in. Let's see. Where do you go? Where do we go? This one's around behind the, the headers, I think. No? Right there. Well, that oil that's dripping down earlier, it's lubricating everything real good. I saw I saw a puddle on the ground a little bit, and I was like, what? And I said, oh yeah, I had the valve cover off front of the engine. He usually feel little drips, but that was about a 12 inch puddle. I was like, what? Let's see, if I put my finger over the hole, then I won't accidentally get all kinds of crap all over the end of the plug trying to get it in there. That one I didn't do as good. Couldn't get the, I couldn't even get that in that situation. Okay. This one's threading that end good, so. I don't think we have any problem with our threads. I think the other one was just probably kind of carboned up or rusted a little. It didn't look rusty, it was just all black. Light in my face. Right. Now the handle's right in my view. <laughs> but that's better than me. These spark plugs don't have uh, gaskets like, well, I guess hardly any of them do anymore. But these were one of the first engines to come out with, I think the big blocks were the same way, I can't remember now. Yeah, I believe they were. You know what, I don't know. Of, those, of these years, you know. Well, it started in around 70, I think. Anyway, this, they start didn't use the spark plugs with the with the washers on them, you know, the compression washers. And these are smaller than, than normal plugs used to be, and pretty much most models of cars. Okay, that's got that nice little wooden seat to sit on, and I'm sitting on everything else. Well, I had to get down low, but that needs to be on the inside. Well, I'm not done putting that back. Well, let's just run it a little bit. And then we'll put all of our big uh, press, press downs on there, whatever they're supposed to be called. Just let that be touching the header at least. And if it, it's 93 now out here. I'm not dying yet, but we'll, it seems like Further, well, the sun comes around. I don't know how to show it, but it starts over there and it goes like that, and it ends up back on shining on this side of the house from the back. So it gets hotter right in this spot in the afternoon as it goes on. I mean, let's wait a later on. But if you stay out here till I think it starts getting hotter around 2:30 or so, then three, four, five, you know, six, seven, it gets hotter and hotter in the sun. So. I'll leave it like that while I start it. And I think I'll start up this other camera. I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to leave this one running. It's all plugged up and it can show what's going on over here. And I think I'll start the other camera. I can't even plug it up. I can plug it up to my drop light, but then I can't move my drop light around very far. Okay. Yeah, I'm ready to start it, I think. OK. 
Okay, yeah, let's do that, see if it runs any better. Hopefully it will. And see if it's my, now I'm gonna be, now that I got the valve cover back on, I can rev it up a little and see if it's making that noise and stuff. Ugh. Yeah, I'm plugging up my other camera and getting it started up. Show us something out here. He was acting like it might go in there, and I thought, no, that's wrong. And I thought, yeah, let's show it something out. <laughs> Alright. Okay, we're going to start it up. Got all four plugs changed for my backup used plugs, my XLs. And we'll see what they do. They help. If it runs okay, I'll rev it up a little bit and see if it's. Uh, see if it'll run okay. And if that noise, and if that noise is still there. Make sure everything's in good space, shape. Looks okay.
worse instead of better. I got it there. The only reason I had it running at all is because I had the, uh, now the sun's getting right where I set. Right now, let's see. Uh, only reason I kept it running at all is I, was, I opened up that vacuum line I have that goes to the intake, the bottom of the carburetor, right above the intake manifold, and I was spraying starter fluid. I mean, I was spraying carburetor cleaner in there because I thought that might clean something out. I did yes, last yesterday or whenever it was when it gave me trouble with the uh, starter fluid. And that is how I got it, you know, to run. Oh, I didn't have my old gloves on, so my hands would probably mess them up. Should go wash them, I guess. I forgot how to get in here. Yeah, the front end is getting hot. Sun is. I didn't think it was going to happen this soon. It's hitting exactly. Mm -hmm. Under the hood, I'm out of the sun, but it's hitting exactly right where I've got to crawl in. It's only the first four or six inches right now, but it's gonna, maybe when the sun moves a little more, it'll get better. But uh, I'm going to take my light and look at the... I'm about to need my gloves to keep the bottom of my hands when I try to move around and touch this front of this truck. Uh, it acts like it's not getting fuel now maybe that fuel is bad wait no it's got fuel in it it's full and it looks clean let's take the thing off of it air cleaner Even if my back, sec you know, my secondaries were clogged up or something. It would uh, break carburetor cleaner in this uh, in the fuel in the bowl. I mean, yeah, carburetor cleaner. Maybe I have multiple problems. Actually, shouldn't be unforeseen if something has been sitting this long. So, but I kind of squirted around. I did that. I think I did it with starter fluid. Didn't realize I had carburetor cleaner in, in there in my in my truck behind the seat. I have a fairly new can and have starter fluid and have a bunch of all the normal stuff that you. I've always I always I forgot I always kept all the that kind of stuff in the truck so that if I had any trouble, I could fix it on the road, you know, or at least get it going again. That fuel filter is clean. No, I don't see that any tap on it. I don't see anything coming up. Not a thing. Ow. Let's see. I'm trying to see what's in my picture. Oh, yeah, you can see the carburetor. I don't know how good the picture is. I can't tell that by the screen, but it's probably okay. It usually is. There's nothing in there. I used to have a starter switch. I don't know if it'll work on this or not. I mean, I, I didn't. I'm trying to remember. I used to use it on my 64 Chevelle. I had a. It came with a 6 cylinder, but I, I had somebody put a 350 in it back when I was in the 73, 74 when I was a teenager. It was my second car. I wrecked my first car. 1960, 60, 61, 62 Buick Invicta with a 445 Wildcat. Big block. Burned oil. Fell the plugs ever so often, a couple, two, three of them, but it would run 110 all day long. Just a smooth cruiser. And then I got my 64 Chevelle. And it had air conditioner and everything, but it had a six fan. I didn't like that. So, anyway, that 
and then I think my 64 panel truck that I put a 454 and a turbo 400 in it that I think I might have used that starter switch but this I don't know if it's I don't, uh, you hooked it up on the starter and then you could just mash the button and start it I think as long as the key was turned on I don't know if you can do that in I don't kind of don't see why you couldn't if I knew where it was I have an idea where it could be but I have to do some digging to find the box that it might be in you know none of the screws uh, have been uh, changed or anything it shouldn't well it was running really good I mean you know, I, I put the new uh, fuel transfer turbo in there and it was running great it, the only thing it did is it would kind of boggle if you tried to rev it up when it was cold and I never did really warm it up I didn't expect to have any trouble but uh, now it's doing what it did yesterday that one run it on so the plugs didn't help and I don't think I just put in four bad plugs you know even if I had one or even two bad plugs it should run and not just die if you try to rev it up even the tiniest little bit it just that kills it so yeah no fuel if you let it try to idle it just sits there running rough and then dies could have bad sport, uh, plug wires or I could have something I could still have valve problems because that's what it sounded to me like when I did have it up and running. Was valve troubles. It sounded at the tailpipe most of all, where I got the clue on that. But, uh, yeah, I would like to be right here. And start it and you know you can always give it gas from there or on the other side I'm always it's a little harder to stay away from the fan and the alternator and everything right on this side I like and plus you can reach the carburetor better you don't have to lean over and get your face in front of it because it backfires or something so I usually I get on that side to do that but huh, I don't know if I want to try to do that or what I don't see any point in re Changing all those plugs on that side until I figure, I think, and I, and I could check, you know, plug, checking my plug wires is not a bad idea, I don't believe, but it's a uh, starter for fuel. I realize that now. It didn't, it could be that the darn old, uh, Well, it does have a train. I just said it didn't have a transmission cooler. It does have one that's built into the radiator. Uh, I was looking at I thought that was a fuel line for a minute. I was like, no, that goes to the radiator. Uh, it's a metal line, you know, going up to a rubber hose. But the uh, fuel pump, it's not leaking or anything, but that don't mean it didn't go bad. Could be why it's not revving up right. But it's got fuel right now. I mean, I couldn't tell whether it was, you know, when I'm up in the cab, I can't see my filter to see if it's, uh, I guess if I reviewed my videos, I might be able to tell. I thought, I, I was kind of wanting to do that at this point and to listen to that sound, but I didn't have time. I needed to come out before it got too hot. So. <clears throat> Unless my gr uh, missing ground has got something to do with it. put that on there. What if that had something to do with it? It didn't. I mean, it's acting just like it did. Doubt it. But I was thinking about uh, setting the uh, lifters, but that side didn't even tick. They, they sounded good. They didn't seem like, you know, none of them were like wanting to turn off of there or anything. I think I'm going to put that valve cover back on there all to get all the way and uh, put that ground on there and try to start it. I don't think it'll help, but I do remember, I don't remember what the problem was with the ground being uh, not there, not having one, but it was some sort of problem. Okay, we're sitting up there on the front of the truck where it gets hot. Yeah, I'm going to get all my little pieces and uh, put them back. 
So I think I'll stop this side video for now. And I'm just gonna go wipe them off and bring them back, and then I'll start the videos back. Then.